Electricity is a huge part of life today. We use it in so many of our daily activities in so many different ways. It's essential to many aspects of the world we live in. Electricity is all around us, but we still take it for granted without really understanding how it reaches us or where it comes from. So what is electricity? Everything in the universe is made up of particles such as atoms. An atom is composed primarily of a nucleus. Inside the nucleus are protons and neutrons, and around the nucleus are particles called electrons. These electrons gravitate around the nucleus much like satellites orbit the Earth. When the electrons cross over from one atom to another, we call this a movement of electrons. This movement is what creates an electric current, or electricity. How can we get electrons to move so that we can generate electricity? First, we need a conductor, like copper wire, in which electrons can move easily. But how do we get the electrons to move in the conductor? One way is to use the magnetic field from a magnet. What happens when you bring two magnets together? They either repel one another or attract one another. If we sprinkle iron filings on a magnet, we see lines of force appear. These lines show how the magnetic field spreads out around the magnet. Like the Earth, magnets have a North Pole and a South Pole. If we bring together, let's say, two North Poles, the magnets will repel one another. On the other hand, if we bring together a South Pole and a North Pole, the magnets will attract one another. The force acting on the magnets is called the magnetic field. When we place a magnet near a conductor, the magnetic field has an immediate impact on the electrons, and they begin to move in one direction or the other, depending on the pole that passes in front of them. The magnetic field, therefore, causes the electrons to move back and forth inside the conductor. Varying the magnetic field is important for producing electricity. If we don't move the poles of the magnet, the magnetic field doesn't vary, and no electric current is induced in the conductor. On the other hand, if the conductor is constantly exposed to a variable magnetic field, an electric current is created. That's how electricity is generated. There are two types of electric current, alternating current and direct current. Direct current is created when the electrons always move in the same direction. Alternating current is created when the electrons move back and forth in the conductor. But how is electricity generated every day in a large electric power system like ours? To really understand this phenomenon, we have to go straight to the source, inside hydroelectric generating stations where the generating units are located. In the previous example, we saw how the two poles on a moving magnet generate alternating electric current in a conductor. To produce electricity with powerful generators, you have to perform the same process but on a much larger scale. A generator is made up of two main parts, a rotor and a stator. The outer wall of the rotor is made up of several magnets arranged with alternating north and south poles. These magnets spin inside the stator. The stator is the stationary part of the generator and is made up of a winding of conductors consisting of copper bars. To induce an electric current, the magnetic field needs to vary, which means the magnets must be mobile. The rotor rotates and the stator containing the copper winding stays in place. Let's imagine a single magnet and a single conductor. When the electromagnet spins, it induces an electric current as it passes in front of the conductor. Since the conductor is being acted on by north and south poles in rotation, alternating current is generated. In this example, when the rotor turns once, the stator has felt the effect of two poles, north and south, which means the alternating current has gone back and forth, or completed one cycle, or one hertz. The Quebec electric power system runs on 60 hertz. That's 60 cycles per second. That's a lot. A cycle is equivalent to two poles passing in front of the conductor, which means that 60 cycles per second corresponds to 120 poles spinning per second. If we were working with a single magnet, it would have to spin incredibly fast to generate 120 poles per second. And 120 poles per second, that's 60 hertz, the frequency of our power system. If generators had different frequencies, then we wouldn't be able to connect them on a power system. That's why all generators in North America have the same frequency, 60 hertz. But what determines the speed of the rotor? 
In hydroelectric generating stations, the rotors are activated by hydraulic turbines. For water to transfer its energy to the turbine, it must fall from a certain height. This is called the hydraulic head. The head determines the rotation speed of the turbine. The higher the head, the faster the turbine spins. For an electrical frequency of 60 Hz, each copper bar in the stator must pass both the north and south poles 60 times per second for a total of 120 poles per second. So 120 poles per second is equivalent to 60 Hz. Let's look at a concrete example involving a real generating station. At Manic 5, the hydraulic head is high, so the rotor spins at a high speed, reaching three revolutions per second. At three revolutions per second, how many poles does the rotor need to reach a frequency of 60 Hz? Remember that 120 poles per second is equivalent to 60 Hz. The rotor makes three revolutions per second, so it takes 40 poles to reach 120 poles per second, since 120 poles per second is 60 Hz. Let's apply the same logic to Jean Lesage generating station, where the hydraulic head is lower. There, the rotation speed of the rotor is lower, at two revolutions per second. At two revolutions per second, how many poles does the rotor need to reach a frequency of 60 Hz? The rotor makes two revolutions per second, so it takes 60 poles to reach 120 poles per second. Remember that 120 poles per second is equivalent to 60 Hz. So the frequency is the same across Quebec's power grid, 60 Hz. As you know, electricity is invisible. We can't see it, but we can measure it. For example, we can determine how much electricity is used by a given home. Let's discuss the main units used to measure electricity. Electrical power is expressed in watts and is a function of two elements, voltage and amperage. To understand what we mean by power, let's use the analogy of a garden hose. If you think about a garden hose, the water pressure is the force of the projected water. The higher the hose pressure, or force, the stronger the stream of water. The same applies to power lines. The voltage pushes the electrons. The higher the voltage, the harder the electrons are pushed. Voltage is expressed in volts. In our example, the water flow is the quantity of water drops leaving our hose. The higher the flow, the more water comes out. The drops are the electrons in our power line. They represent the current, or amperage, of the electricity. The higher the amperage in the line, the more electrons are flowing through it. Amperage is expressed in amperes, or amps. The power of the water stream is a combination of its pressure and flow. Thanks to these two elements, pressure and flow, the water can move an object. It's the same thing with electricity. The combination of two elements, voltage and volts, amperage and amperes, determines power in watts. Let's put this power in a real-world context. When a light bulb is on, it consumes energy measured in watt-hours. If we leave a 10-watt light bulb on for 100 hours, it consumes 1,000 watt-hours. 1,000 watt-hours is one kilowatt-hour. Kilowatt-hour is the unit used by Hydro-Quebec to measure and bill the electricity used in every home, business, plant, school, and so on. Electricity is a precious form of energy that is essential to our lives. In Quebec, electricity is over 99% renewable because it's generated primarily using hydro, wind, and solar power. Hydro-Quebec researchers work tirelessly to transform systems in order to integrate new renewable energy sources because the energy transition is the future.